this is Kim again with KMZ. We're talking to James Bartley. So, James, this is uh, part two of our show. Um, you gave us a lot of information um, about uh, your experiences when you were young, how it started, how these crazy, weird, alien, out-of-your-body experience have happened. Um, moving on now, you've um, basically... Um, Barbie and who is the other one? Um, Dr. Carla Schroeder. Carla, you've um, researched with them. You have a lot of information. To, to Eve Morgan, too. I worked a lot with Eve Morgan. Eve, um, yeah, so you've, oh. you're able to help um, uh, pass on that wonderful information. I know I've been following you for years, and um, I've uh, always... Um, admired your work and uh, I've wanted to do a show with you and have you on to and, and kind of share your stuff and so I'm really thankful I just want to say that if I haven't said that enough I'm really glad you're here tonight so um, so moving on now uh, you are cosmic the cosmic switchboard host and how long have you been doing that the last three years, and we've had some great guests. I've done my own commentaries. I've done 60-some-odd commentaries mm -hmm. about various subjects, and I've had numerous guests, and I've had some great guests in the recent past. Gary Heseltine, Tony Sayers, um, mm -hmm. Sonia Zohar talking about Sasquatch and interacting with Sasquatch. So over the years, I've had some wonderful guests, and it's been a learning experience, a wonderful ride for me. Wonderful. So um, earlier when you first got here, I heard you talking about the dogmen. Yes, yes. And um, you were mentioning that you thought they were an um, interdimensional uh, man type dog, that they're the worst of the worst, and that they're the bullies. Or Well, the information that I got, and I have no reason to doubt this, I have, I've had Jody Cook on my show, who's the founder of the North American Dogman Project. I've also talked to him privately, you know, off air before we started recording. And he told me from his perspective and his team's perspective, based on all the reports they've collated from all over North America, and now North American Dogman Project has branches in Australia, all over the place. As best as they can figure out, there's three basic types of dogmen and variations, you know, for each group. The first dogman would be a terrestrial dogman, upright canid being six, seven, eight, nine feet or higher. And they can look like with a wolf head or a German shepherd looking head or a chow head or a looking like a, uh, a hyena. Hmm. But there's different types. And they're basically what we would call terrestrial brings. Some call them cryptids, but they've been here all along pretty much, at least for a long time. The second general type is what Jody Cook regards as supernatural. They seem to manifest metaphysical capabilities. Like, for example... From just the reports that I've studied, some of these dogmen seem to be able to manifest like um, a fog bank, for example. Just suddenly, out of nowhere, this fog appears and then some, someone has a dogman encounter. Now, they do have the, some of them do have the infrasonic capability like the Sasquatch do, where they can emit this infrasonic shriek or howl or whatever, and it paralyzes people. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about metaphysical capabilities. Some of the like panther sightings in different places, Pennsylvania, what have you, and some of the um, the big wolf, huge wolf sightings around, for example, the um, the ranch in Utah, right? Skin, uh, the Skinwalker skin Ranch, exactly. I was just about to mention that. <laughs> yeah, the, the Skinwalker Ranch, it's like, you know, the gigantic wolf walks away, mm -hmm. no prints, uh, even in deep snow or, or in, in mud or something, it, and... So they're manifesting some kind of metaphysical capability. In the Skinwalker Ranch saga, one of the guys that fired a bunch of rounds into a, a big wolf creature and had no effect on it whatsoever. So, okay, that's another category, the supernatural capability dogmen, if you will. Yeah. And the third category he talked about, based on his discussions, this is Jody Cook, not me. And, um, I'll, you know, I'd love to have him on your show, too. I'll, I'll talk to him. He said, based on sources within the military intelligence community and private contractors, there's an ET race that is basically a wolf humanoid type being. They have body armor, which we've heard from certain reptilian races have body mm -hmm. armor. Okay? Mm -hmm. 
And not only do these wolf humanoid beings have body armor, but they have like what looks like a scimitar type type of sword, which they use to, you know, kill beings with. And one of the uh, witnesses, that um, one of the stories that this informant had told Jody Cook was, in their time in Afghanistan during the wars there, they saw this wolf like humanoid being manifest I can't remember the exact details uh, but long and short of it it used that sword it had to kill these Taliban insurgent type people right and it was witnessed by these military people and apparently over time they captured I can't remember the details whether it was a crash craft whatever the case may be but they've captured more than two of these uh, wolf humanoids and brought them to a secure facility in South America. Long story short, they escaped and then wreaked havoc in the local communities, killed, killed a bunch of people. They had to spend the, send these special ops teams in there to neutralize them, right? So he was telling me that from based on what his informants told him, this wolf ET being is just frightening. Yeah. Uh, does any of it have to be with uh, genetic manipulation, DNA of uh, kind of a wolf breed uh, bred into, the you know, hybrid. like yes. a hybrid type thing? That's a very good thing? question. That's very, I believe that, this is just my feeling, but if you go back in time and you listen to the research, it's hard to find a good video of him, but Robert Morning Sky, way back in the day, a Native American guy, he went through a lot of harassment talking about <clears throat> some of the stuff related to ETs and what have you. Anyway, based on his research, he talked about how there were these wolf humanoid ETs, and they originated, and he says there's a reason why the dog star, Sirius, is called the way it mm -hmm. is, Sirius the dog star, because mm -hmm. these beings really came. That was one of the places they came from. Mm -hmm. These wolf humanoid, you know, Canis Major, Canis yeah, Minor. Yeah, they were the star systems named after this one type of Syrian. Mm -hmm. One type of Syrian is this wolf kind of being, right? And apparently they had some kind of alliance with the Draco Orion Queens, these reptilian. Yes, from Orion. Uh, mm -hmm. And this came up in a recent discussion I had. Oh, it was the uh, Toxic Feminine Divine Goddess Programming panel discussion mm. um, I chaired. And we talked about how in, in the lore of the, the Orion Wars and the Draco Orion Wars, the ones who were really calling the shots were these Draco female beings that really controlled the male reptilians in those star systems and made the males do all their bidding, right? And so, apparently, according to Robert Morningsky's lore, these wolf humanoids, through a marriage of convenience, allied themselves with these Draco Orion queens and reptilians in order to assert control over the galaxy and mm -hmm. solar system, system, basically. But then you look in the lore of our ancient times, there's the founding of Rome, Romulus and Re Remus being nursed by a female she-wolf. So you have these stories going back of these godlike wolf, wolf, wolf beings, mm -hmm. and especially the Native American lore. There's a lot of that in the Native American lore. So I do believe there really are three types of wolf beings or, or canine beings, normal terrestrial, if you want to call them normal, the supernatural types, which could be interdimensional because the Native American lore and the Aboriginal lore states that the so-called cryptids, some of them know the doorways between our world and other worlds, and many of them are from other worlds. They just happen to come here and hunt or do whatever they're going to do. So there's that interdimensional slash supernatural variety and then the ET variety. Um, I have one more question, and then I'm going to turn it over to you guys. What about these interdimensional possibly interdimensional cryptid beings possessing humans and uh, maybe giving them the ability to be some sort of a shapeshifter or at least the humans participating telepathy or mentally or or uh, remotely participating with these interdimensional beings and experiencing sort of a skinwalker event before I answer that, and just remind me of that question, let me answer the question about the genetic aspect. The point I was making, which I kind of got sidetracked, was there were originally some can canine upright humanoid ET beings. They may have mated or inbred with native canine humanoid beings, wolf humanoid beings, somewhere along the way. Because if you look back at ancient times, people can look this up, there was a race of beings called the 
sino, sinocephali, I think they were called. It could be mispronounced again. That's the Greek word for it, sinocephali. And what it was was a race of dog-headed or wolf-headed people. Alexander the Great talked about them. It's in, in, in the lore of ancient times, Greek and the Egyptians, a lot Egyptians, of them talk yeah. about yeah. this race, literal race of people mm -hmm. who were dog-headed or wolf-headed. Okay? So, and also, I encourage your listeners and, and viewers to look up the original um, Thundercats cartoon mm -hmm. because you will sure. see not only reptilians, yeah. but you will see these these wolf beings and these dog-headed beings, the lion beings, the lion the beings, wild cat the, 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 the fact that in the first episode of that uh, cartoon, um, Thundercats, they blew up the lion feline world. There's a lot of truth in that because the lion feline beings, who are warriors, by the way, their home world was destroyed by the reptilians and they had to migrate the survivors to Sirius and Pleiades and other star systems. So when you hear these New Age la -di das talk about everything is love and light in the fifth and sixth dimension, no, there's a lot of conflict still in those higher dimensions. And these um, lion beings have been battling the reptilians and vice versa for lo these countless millennia. Yeah, it's quite so, a bit of disclosure just within that first episode. Just that, that first. So basically, yes, uh, somewhere along the way, just as the deep black military have found, um, you know, gotten hold of, of Sasquatch bodies, uh, there's the case in Florida when this, you know, woman saw a Sasquatch in her backyard. She gunned it down. It might have been a juvenile, six, seven feet, and um, gunned it down in the Department of, um, you know, um, I forget the particular federal agency that deals with wildlife and the, and the parks and all that. They came around, other feds came around, they took the body away. And that wasn't the only time. So I'm sure by now, just as they've had all these Sasquatch bodies, like the way they've recovered alien bodies over the years, the geneticists will get a hold of some of those samples and start doing stuff with it. So it's, it, I know for a fact, based on my research and talking with other investigators, that the deep black military by this time, for a long time now, has been cloning out their own greys to do their bidding. And these stories of greys working for deep black military goes back to the 90s and, and the late 80s at least. We know that, you know, Mike Carpenter, I've had him on my show, he talks about his informants have told them that they've seen uh, military with helicopters and, 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 you know, ground troops chasing after Sasquatch, whether to neutralize or to capture or to bring back a body, we don't know. But I feel that just as they've genetically manipulated Sasquatch DNA by this point, because remember, we've had, uh, I've talked to you about uh, Jorge Martin, Albert, before the show started, right. the great Puerto Rican uh, UFO investigator. He talked about a case where an eyewitness in Puerto Rico had seen these Palladian-looking Nordic beings, and they seemed to have this Sasquatch being under their control. It was like all acting all robotic, and they were just doing things with it, but it's clearly the Palladian-looking beings had control of the Sasquatch. Well, it's not too much of a stretch to suggest that over time, the deep black military has recovered Sasquatch cadavers, Sasquatch DNA, etc. If that's the case, the possibility exists. Over the years, there was a race called the Sinocephali, and I've spoken to uh, Sandra Fecht and other researchers. They told me that some of their sources... Uh, some of the informants that they knew were being harassed by the military, kidnapped for genetic experiments, and it turned out that some of them have this wolf lichen, if you will, DNA. I can, so I, can, um, I, I have no doubt. Time. Yeah, I have no doubt at this point that, and I haven't even gotten to the best part yet. Going back to at least the late '80s, early '90s, we know that some of these wolf humanoid beings, I'm guessing these may have been cloned out have been working for deep black elements of the military intelligence community. One of my dear friends since passed away, Marianne Friedman, she was abducted by a wolf humanoid being wearing an actual uniform. I wish I had the sketch with me. And I'll provide it to you guys so you can put it up on the website if I can find it. She was taken into a mountain in, in what she believes to be northern Arizona. Uh, I was friends with a, the great UFO researcher, Bill Hamilton, former NSA Russian linguist, and he did a lot of research with informants in, in the Antelope Valley in Southern California, the Aerospace Valley. And his wife, Pam Hamilton, was being harassed by a wolf humanoid being 
in an Air Force uniform who spoke English and threatened her and told her, we warned you not to talk about your experiences. It spoke to her in English. Mm -hmm. And one of Bill Hamilton's other witnesses, uh, it was a family, uh, mother, father, and two kids, and they got lost. And they were driving near the, the base of Tehachapi Mountain in, in the San Gabriel Mountains. Now, Tehachapi Mountain is known as the anthill to the locals. It's, it's a big underground aerospace Northrop Grumman facility, which has been known to involve alien technology and alien craft have been known to travel there. Can I land. interject something? Uh, telepathically, I have gotten um, messages from the Ant Hill. Really? Mm, yes. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. It is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Because there have been people that have been abducted and taken into the Ant Hill. In fact, the aforementioned Pam Hamilton, who was threatened by the uh, wolf humanoid and said, we told you not to talk, all this stuff. She was taken on board a craft by the military and then flown over because she can see from her front yard uh, the anthill, right? She was flown in a craft to the anthill. She looked out of a portal looking down and she saw a side of the mountain move aside and beneath it there was a landing pad with a number 41. And then she said that the craft, the circular craft, disc shaped craft she was in, descended through that hole and landed on that pad. Later, she got a friend, you know, to fly around in a light plane, she and her friend, the pilot, and they went looking for this entrance. Of course, they wouldn't find it because it's hydraulic. And, but mm -hmm. the point of relevance is you asked about genetic engineering. Mm -hmm. Yes, by now, they would have captured or somehow come across the DNA of these dogmen mm -hmm. and created perhaps. And another story that Bill Hamilton talks about is Getting back to that family they got lost at the base of uh, the Ant Hill in Tehachapi Mountain. They were driving up this hill when they came across, I can't remember if it was like a platoon or a company of these dogmen in Air Force uniform that were being drilled by an Air Force officer. They looked up and had this WTF moment. They whipped the car around and drove down the hill and the, the wolfmen humanoids in the Air Force uniforms were chasing after them, hurling sticks and, and rocks at them. Right, mm -hmm. and they told the story to Bill Hamilton. So, and then I, I had uh, Linda Godfrey. She's done a lot of great research on the Dogman and wrote a number of books about Wolfmen in America, etc. I've ever had her on my show, and she talks about how some of her witnesses have told her they've seen these wolf beings in the presence of U.S. military. Yep. So it's not a small sample size to be sure. But I think there's enough there that there may be substance to the whole idea. I have a friend that can can uh, confirm something exact where he, and I'm not going to give the name, but he was messed with DNA, uh, has the wolf gene, and actually was transported over to um, a war area at a very young age to act as, as a warrior yes. as, and as a remote viewer and as a, a um, super soldier type and with those capabilities and um and coming back after that i uh, experienced a lot of um depression and things like that because of the experience with the di experiments with the different um medications and things like that overdoing on this overdoing that and now you know basically has to live a very sheltered life due to all of that uh, trauma and yeah. uh, but still has Tremendous abilities and power, very psychic and things like that. So I can, you know, agree with that statement. So Matur's information kind of corroborates. And I would encourage the viewers and, viewers and listeners to go to Vic Cundiff's show, uh, Dogman Encounters Radio, on uh, online, um, on YouTube, and as well as uh, the, the ch website. Dogman Encounters Radio is brilliant. There's like 290 episodes, uh, each one a different ET no, rather a dogman encounter to somebody's head. And some of these people live in dogman country, so they have multiple dogman encounters, sometimes with multiple dogmen. Where's country? What do you mean? What country has... Well, yeah, like, um, for example, Pennsylvania or Ohio or Texas or um, Mississippi. There's certain yeah. places in those states where you may not just run into one dogman. You could run into a pack of them. You, wow. know, you could run into two mm -hmm. or more. What do you uh, think that is? Is it something to do with the land or the topography? Or what might that be, do you think? A, according to the people who really delved into this, studied the, the various cases, and there's a lot of them, 
there seems to be some commonality, but it, it's not a strict rule, and it doesn't apply to all the cases, but it's not unusual for dogmen to show up in a cornfield. It's not unusual for dogmen to show up in a cemetery. It's not unusual for dogmen to show up in Indian burial ground places. Uh, but really, they can show up anywhere, urban environments. I saw one in Bullhead City. I drove right by one that was walking on all fours, and, and I was sitting in, in the car driving, and, and this thing was up to my shoulder at least. It was on all fours. You know, I find this interesting. Wow. Uh, as we all know, you know, each of us here are into different types of shows. I mean, we have a broad spectrum of interest. Um, I know all of us here are, you know, a lot of us are into the paranormal and supernatural research of different levels. Um, a few of us here actually go out and do, you know, paranormal research. And a lot of the shows that are on right now um, are actually having just random people capturing things on the cameras, on their iPhones that are alluding to what you're talking about. There's actually a whole series that I've just recently um, watched, and they're catching all kinds of creatures with the, everything that you've actually mentioned today has been actually <laughs> caught by a random stranger, not even a researcher. Yes, because I've spoken to people, uh, David um, Eckhart, Eckhart in Florida. Mm -hmm. He's done fantastic reptilian research. He can't help it because they come right into his house. There's a Stargate portal entry right in his house, and what he's done is he's taken a, a like a big mason jar, filled it with water, and and taken uh, imagery through it, yeah. and somehow, and we know through the, the study of the lore that bodies of water, pools, waterfalls, they seem to be associated with entryways into other realms and other mm -hmm. dimensions. But yeah. for whatever reason, when he takes pictures through this. Mm -hmm mason jar he sees all kinds of stuff you know et stargates and what, what's on the other side of the stargates and i encourage him to get like an aquarium because it's kind of flatter but of course that costs some money you know so it almost reminds me of the uh the old uh scrying glasses the crystal ball concept yes, yes. something kind of like absolutely that. yeah um, Nasser Dhamas apparently looked into a pool of water there you to, go. to see yeah. a lot of his, wells. Yeah, yeah, and then someone else told me that uh, using the the app, the phone app for the doorbell cam, mm. for some reason, and you don't have to do, have to have the cam at the doorbell. You could have it anywhere else. For some reason, through the app and through the phone, it sees it's able to see stuff that is not visible in the normal visual spectrum. Yeah, right. So uh, I, I know one person who's taken. Uh, uh, video and footage through the doorbell cam mm -hmm. and has seen portals with dogmen coming out of it. Oh, so so that jibes with what the Native Americans say. They say that some of these dogmen, Sasquatch, call them what you will, they come from, some of them at least, come from other dimensions and they know where the doorways are. Mm -hmm. And that jibes with a lot of the testimony that people have because uh, Mike Carpenter, he talks about the apers, so-called, in the Sasquatch field. They, Sasquatch is a big hairy primate. And, you know, they're just out there looking for prints and out there looking for first samples. And they completely ignore the interdimensional aspects of Sasquatch where, you know, people have seen like a bright blue flash and Sasquatch steps into a portal, disappears, or comes out of a portal, or becomes invisible and manifests things in midair. And Sasquatch can do all of that. Well, not all Sasquatch. I would say that some Sasquatch can do that. So some Sasquatch are definitely interdimensional. And the... Um, the, the problem is in, in, in the Sasquatch field, there's all these apers who want to keep everything at this ape-man kind of primate level. Just like in UFO research, there's all these people who want to keep it at a light in the sky level, keep it at arm's length, it just lights in the sky, nothing about big underground bases full of aliens or nothing like that. So James, moving forward, are you writing books? Uh, tell us about what's coming up for you. Um, given a lecture in... Um, Melbourne, or it's a suburb of Melbourne, called Preston, and you can find the information on my website, thecosmicswitchboard.com, and then uh, shortly after that, I'm going to embark on a, you know, a lecture tour of my own, uh, and I'm going to be talking in the Melbourne lecture. Think of it as a UFO, what does the government military know, the basics, since at least the late 1940s, early 1940s, right? So... Those of you that are World War II buffs that are familiar with the names of these famous World War II generals and admirals and scientists and engineers, you might want to tune into some of these lectures because I'll be mentioning some of these world famous people and uh, what they know about aliens and UFOs. So uh, it, it's the kind of lecture I would have liked 
uh, kind of to learn the basics of it all. If I was brand new to the subject and I had a UFO encounter, I want to learn more. My lecture is geared toward, okay, this is like the alien abduction stuff and the mil what the military knows and, and what the pilots know in a nutshell mm -hmm. for two mm -hmm. hours, an hour, whatever. So and when is this? It's uh, March 21st and 22nd uh, in Melbourne, actually a place called Preston, which is a, a suburb of Melbourne. And I'll have that information on my website. Will that be live streamed or anything like that? or Not that I'm that aware of. I'll broadcast? talk to the uh, people, but um, I, don't, I don't think it is. I think you just have to be there. But uh, I'll let you know when I'm going to be doing a live stream mm -hmm. where I'm doing, um, you know, a podcast that okay. involves ETs that you'd be interested in. Sounds great. Any questions for James? Um, I do, actually. I have one uh, been in my head the last couple few minutes here. Uh, since we're talking about uh, these dog-like, uh, canine-like people. Upright canine. Or upright, yeah. yeah. And talking about Skinwalker Ranch and all that. Um, I'm sure you're probably familiar with uh, the Stardust Ranch. No, no, no? where is that? Yeah. Okay, so the reason why I bring this up is recently um, I, I've spoken to the owner like maybe uh, just a handful of times in the past. Um, I just recently found out that he is uh, providing tours now on, on, this, uh, on his ranch. Basically, just to give a little bit of history on this guy, uh, over 20 years ago, uh, he, you know, this guy's from Illinois, him, him and his wife, and they, his dream was always to own a ranch where he can uh, rehab uh, horses. And he f he looked and you know they searched, and for uh, a ranch that um, number one that you know they could afford that they would be happy with, so they found this ranch in Rainbow Valley, uh, Arizona, which is like southwest, a little bit southwest of Phoenix, so it's not too far from here. And <laughs> this particular uh, ranch is like a buffet of everything paranormal you can think of. Um, the owner's name is John Edmonds, and um, in recent years he's been uh, trying to sell the property. <laughs> no doubt, yeah. He's kind of he's kind of like done with it in a way. Um, but some of the stuff that's happened on on his ranch is um, he's had UFO craft site. We re recently he had some, I believe about a week ago above his ranch but he has ufo sightings above his ranch he has et sightings on his ranch both in in this home mm. um he's got a portal in his home in the living room mm. um he's got another one outside the home near uh, uh you know as you know on, on on the ranch itself um he's had encounters with uh the brillo people which are these brillo like brillo looking creatures um on the ranch from time to time he's also uh his his home is also haunted and uh, there's somebody that shot himself uh, there's a teenage he's kid that shot himself in there <laughs> he's got shadow he's got shadow people in there um he had his uh his wife he actually stopped an abduction one time um he stopped his wife from getting abducted Wow. Yeah, there was so there there's a lot of history with this place and there's also some kind of weird time distortion mm. thing going on mm. on this property now that i know of this particular ranch lies on a ley line oh yeah and and it's if if, if you if you kind of map it all out it actually lays on a same ley line that goes all the way up to skinwalker ranch uh -huh. oh so they're, my god they're, they're, like, they're like they're like connected right wow so this guy has had several paranormal uh investigators he's had military government um show up to his 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 home and look into all these wow. things that are happening on there um and he's had uh, some encounters with uh, some of these uh grays um there was one particular instance and it's on youtube you can actually see it where he was skyping with his brother um so he's facing the computer, right? And his brother is looking back at him through the screen. And his brother is looking at him and kind of looking behind past his <laughs> shoulder, like in the next room. And he sees something come in through, like, you can kind of catch a little bit of a, what looked like a portal, something coming through. And you kind of see a little bit of a, what looks like it could be a gray 
coming through. And his brother told him, what the heck is going on behind you there? And he, he, he had to go back and kind of, you know, review the tape or whatever. But uh, apparently there was something that came through. <laughs> um, and he said that's happened many times. Um, but he actually, uh, he actually, uh, he said that he managed to kill a few of these greats. Oh, okay. Hmm. Now, well, he, well, he yeah. said he he used and and if you know if John Men- Edmonds ever sees this show, uh, forgive me if I butcher your story because I'm, I'm going off of memory here. Uh, but supposedly he used a samurai sword. Okay. That he had. Now the one thing is the, the first uh, instance where he managed to kill one, um, it dematerialized mm. and disappeared. And I guess he, that happened a couple of times until he finally he's like, ah, okay, let me try to. I mean, kill the next one or whatever, and he killed one, but he uh, salvaged the uh, head. Mm. Wow, and that didn't... Uh, and he de- kept it, well, he kept it in a freezer, um, and he said he gave out some uh, samples, or a sample of of uh, of it to Was some it a lab. Brillo alien that you're talking about? No, this it is gray? an actual gray. Oh, mm. gray. The talls, yeah. the short ones, which ones? Uh, it looks know? to be the short ones. Wow. But he's got some surveillance cameras around the um, his his ranch and he said that one time he was just happened to looking through the video and it looks like he captured some <laughs> some wow. s- some evidence of them one of them even kind of looked it directly into the camera kind of trying to f- look look at what it is I guess and he snapped a shot or something wow um, but he said that he one time he actually caught one of them on on the outside of his ranch and it got startled because it wasn't expecting him there, and it got startled. And it, he, the particular alien had a uh, some kind of a, a really soft, smooth-looking rock. Mm. And in this rock, it had a what looked to be like a laser-cut um, image of a sun. Um, which at the time, I think we didn't have any anything, any technology that would make that kind of a cut into a, a stone like that it was so precise and so clean and when the alien uh when, when john caught the alien i guess it got startled and it opened up a portal and it went through the portal but it, it left behind this rock. Oh, okay. i don't know if it dropped or whatever so he recovered it he recovered he still has it supposedly um and i've been asking i was like you gotta let me see this thing <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so anyways, uh, long story short, uh, so he's had all these things happen on his ranch over the past 20 years. And, um, and he's been on multiple radio shows, uh, describing this stuff. And when I talked to him, um, most recently, maybe about two years ago, he said that, uh, there's more stuff that he, he hasn't even talked about yet. And so he spent about a good, uh, hour talk, telling me this stuff over the, over the, over the phone. And I was so intrigued. I'm like, man, is there a way I can come out there? You I'm know? getting um, time um, um, crossings, um, timeline crossings, interacting with the future or interacting in, yeah. in timelines. That's what's is happening that in his happening? ranch. Yeah. He said he was even, he was sitting one time, he was sitting in the living room, and he caught these like Roman soldiers like a faint image of four Roman soldiers. They were just walking and they were talking to each other. Wow. But it looked like they didn't see him. And uh, it's just weird, like all this weird stuff happening on there. So oh, have you ever heard of such things? Yeah, I have. So anyways, he, he's recently, I guess he, he's uh, now starting some kind of a thing where he's offering tours now. Oh, okay. For people to go go on, on his ranch. You can spend spend the night. If you want to try to capture something in the sky or maybe even a, a sighting on his ranch. Um, wow. Yeah. Well, it's, it's I was just the first, I was just thinking that he wanted to sell it, so he was scared yeah. to be there. Oh, and course. now maybe he's just, now he's exploiting it and maybe he's, maybe he cut a deal with the guys and said, hey, <laughs> you know, like, let's, maybe, uh, I don't let's, know. let's make a, Let's I don't invite know. people in. I don't yeah. know. I don't well, I think he just got. He just got. You know, it's been on the market for for the past. He said supposedly forever, for like oh. ten years, and he's been aggressively trying to sell the last five years, and he just no one's buying it. Sometimes people so. or places, rather, real estate gets a bad rap. Like my previous yeah. place where I lived, one of the previous places, 
around the corner and down the block, there was a haunted house there. And stigmatized and, properties, yeah. Well, people would move in and they'd move out. Yeah. And it would, like, they wouldn't be there more than two months. Something would happen, the whole family would just split. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the property would just left vacant for a long time. So... Yeah, if, if he can't sell it, he might as well. <laughs> well, I mean, even even just from day one, from from, from from day one, from the first day he walked onto the ranch, this is because he bought it sight sight Wait, unseen. His name is John Edmonds. John Edmonds, yeah. Maybe we can get him on the yes, show one time. Yeah, I'd like to talk to this guy. Um, James would love to talk to him. Yeah, absolutely. Hello, um, flying from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> well, just to hear a little bit, about, uh, just a little bit about what happened is uh, he um, the the realtor told him okay this is the day you can move in and you know so he shows up and he's got his his wife and some kind of big um i guess like a u-haul or whatever of, of stuff and he's ready to move in right so he shows up he's got the keys already opens the door realizes wait why is there still furniture in here why does it look occupied mm -hmm. so he got really upset and he called the realtor up yeah he he got upset and he called the realtor and said hey what's going on with this i thought you told me i could move in today can you please contact uh, the previous owners and get them to move their stuff out like now? And so um, he was told to leave for the day, and he came back later that day, and all the stuff was out of the home. But then he walks out into the pool area and he finds everything was dumped in the pool. Uh -huh. And again, further upsetting him. And um, so when he was outside, outside the home, because uh, his ranch is—I forget how how many acres this, this ranch is, but. Uh, he said it's pretty big. And there was an old, creepy-looking guy that just kind of approaches him. On the ranch, by the way. And apparently this guy was living in some kind of little, tiny, like a maybe something resembling a cabin or something on the ranch. But a little bit further back. And the guy comes and he's carrying a machete. Oh. But he just looks really creepy. like. And so John Edmonds got... Uh, he, you know, he, he's a little curious. He's like, okay, what's this guy doing on my property? So he, he tells him, hey, who are you? What are you doing on my property? He's like, oh, well. And the guy re replied by saying, I'm, um, I, I, I live here. I work for the owners. He's like, uh, I'm the owner now. And <laughs> he's like, the owners don't, don't, the previous owners don't own this property anymore. <laughs> and so he basically told the guy, John Emmons told the guy, he's like, I, I need you off my property, you know. Um, and the guy was very like um, basically telling Johnny's like you're gonna need me on here. And I'm basically saying you need somebody to get rid of these monsters on here. So apparently, that's why he had the machete. He was the the guy that would take care of stuff oh, okay. for him around around for the previous owners. I guess why it's probably why the previous owner just bolted. They're like just left everything behind, so they start fresh. Even the furniture. <laughs> Even the furniture. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. We, we've heard similar stories in the, in the Dogman saga. There, there's been people that, like, they be harassed by one or more dogmen. It would yeah. extend over months and months, and yeah. they couldn't take it anymore. They just up and left. Now, or, or Sasquatch. They get harassed yeah. by Sasquatch and they leave. Right now, most recently, he said he's in, he's had um, portals. Um, in the living room, and he's been having mantis Ooh. beings Ooh. coming through now. Okay, yeah. So um, he's had some guests. Even some guests actually uh, were eyewitnesses to this. The people okay. have slept over. This one lady friend of his spent the night on the couch, and she got woken up by a mantis being Ooh. that came in through the. This sounds like a good movie. Portal. So well, <laughs> <laughs> the funny the funny thing about that is when I contacted him uh, a couple years back, um, with the purpose of me wanting to investigate his home go over there you know he's like well um i kind of can't do that right now i'm like why what's going on and he's like well i'm kind of in talks with a hollywood production company and, and there's a chance they might do a three-part um movie about my about my experience on, on this ranch so as of now I'm, I'm not allowed to bring anybody you know to the oh. ranch or do investigations and stuff like that. take control of the whole situation yeah, and, um, but that was a couple years ago, yeah. and I followed up with him maybe a year ago and said, "Hey, uh, is it is it okay to go out there now, or what's going on?" And he had just injured his back. Oh. He was carrying, um, you know, because he still rehabs horses there, um, but he injured his back carrying some hay, like a bale of hay or something. Oh. So, I, you know, I just I'm like, all right, I won't. <laughs> I won't Whereabouts right is now. this again? This is in Rainbow Valley, 
uh, Arizona. It's uh, southwest of uh, Phoenix. Okay. So, like I said, not too terribly far from here. It's a place that I've been wanting to go for a very long time. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of activity even beyond this property. I'm sure that the stuff goes there, goes on there like crazy. Definitely yeah. sounds like like some kind of time thing. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But I was, I was surprised recently to find out because I again I, I check up on him every now and then. I check his Facebook page and see what's going on. And it looks like he recently posted something about uh, him starting up some tours. Mm, if people come yeah. in to spend spend the night over on his ranch, whether it be uh, you know outside, you can camp out and try mm -hmm. to see what you can capture if, if you capture anything. Mm. So Any of the animals were hurt or anything on his? Yeah, ranch? he had his. Uh, he's got dogs, and oh yeah, that's the other thing too. He had horse mutilations Whoa, on yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Laser like these precise you know, laser so cut incisions and. Is that the same thing that's going on at Skinwalker Ranch? I'm not aware. If there's been animal mutilations, it would be, it wouldn't surprise me at the Skinwalker Ranch. But was it like the classic kind of mutilations that was found on like cattle and stuff? And yeah, cows, no, no blood. Yeah, like, things just removed, left ear, the yeah. eye, and yeah, yeah, the, yeah the like weird stuff like that. Left him cord out, and yeah. yeah, he even had a um, he had a one of one or one of his dogs got killed oh, no. by one of what the. Uh, mind, do you know? Off the top of my head, I don't remember, but... Um, but it seems to be in line with the Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah. Cool. yeah. We'll look it up. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking of time, we're kind of uh, um, winding down here. Um, does um, James... Um, I, I've had a delightful time. Thank you for having me on the <laughs> show. I, I really appreciate it. I have a great time talking to all of you. And um, everybody, um, I want to thank everyone for being here. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful pleasure. Um, James, we'll have you back for sure, and then um, um, we might just kind of come on over to your show and, yeah. and say hi too as well. Yeah, that's great. It's fine and with um, me. let's do this again. Yeah, yeah definitely. Let's do it. Thank you. Okay. Maybe and we'll, we'll find your links. <laughs> we'll go ahead and put the links and things. Um, it's Cosmic Switchboard, and the, you can find the that on Facebook. The Cosmic Switchboard dot com. Okay, and then um, James Bartley, we want to thank you once again, thank and uh, we'll see you again. Thanks. Thank All right. Thanks, James. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.